Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. We're continuing our series we've been doing for probably over a year at this point where we're taking a closer look at the terrifying creations used during the Clone Wars by both the Republic and the CIS, but if we're being honest, mostly the CIS. The CIS, more than any other faction in Star Wars, I think has creations which I just simply would not be able to face down as a Republic trooper. They're too terrifying. The Destroyer droid, for example, there's something about its efficiency it's alienist that just makes it a lot more terrifying than, say, a stormtrooper. That principle is being extended today to one of my favorite droids, the Octoptara Combat Tri Droid. I think the new Essential Guide to Droids actually does a really good job of expressing what I just said in a slightly different way. The Octoptara Droid is an example of the insectoid exoticism that often found its way into the designs of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Obviously, in the real world, this droid conjures images of, say, War of the Worlds, and to be honest, the principle is pretty similar. The standard Octoptara was 3.6 meters high. There was an even more terrifying upscaled version, we'll talk about that later, but 3.6 meters, that's over 10 feet. This thing is significantly taller than most combatants on the battlefield, and its sight is really its greatest advantage. The Octoptara was so effective because attached to its central head were not just only three turreted laser cannons, giving it basically a full 360 degrees of fire, but additionally full sensors allowing it to see everything around it. This thing could spot enemies anywhere and take them out with precision. And that's what's so terrifying to me, like I can imagine this thing walking with its legs stretched out amongst the ranks, popping its head up, identifying enemies quickly, and taking them out. That being said, all this processing power also resulted in a very large head, which the new essential guide to droids calls a balloon-shaped globe housing its cognitive circuitry. Like any good head-shaped thing in science fiction, this thing was the droid's weak spot and could be taken out even with small arms fire. Generally, that means despite what we see in the original Clone Wars series, you probably wouldn't have Octoptaras leading a combat charge, but they work very effectively amongst the ranks of your other soldiers in armor, or even at the rear of the formation where their powerful cannons can easily take out infantry. Still, it's good to know that there is some counter to these things, but they also have the added advantage of extreme mobility. These legs aren't just for show, they allowed them to not only move quickly, but even scale vertical surfaces. Octoptara tridroids could hang upside down, and thus were great for ambushes. You can imagine on a planet like Geonosis, which is full of fissures and cracks, you toss an Octoptara tridroid in there, it's scanning everywhere, almost like a probe droid with weapons, and then boom, you got a bunch of dead clone troopers. However, the terror doesn't stop there. If you leave it at that, you've got an efficient killing machine. The new essential guide to droids also also points out that the Octoptara Combat Tri Droid was frequently a platform for biological weapons. So aside from sitting back and sniping, Tri Droids could often charge directly into formation, launching these aerosol containers which house toxins designed specifically to kill clones, which, you know, not very pleasant. So far we've been talking pretty generally but mostly about the smaller variant of the Tri Droid. As I said, 3.6 meters tall, usually probably not even that tall, I mean it would keep its legs not fully extended for stability, but the thing about the Tri Droid is that it could be drastically scaled up. Octoptara droids, and this is a quote, like the Techno Union's crab droids, can be produced in a variety of sizes thanks to scalable manufacturing plants. Most are humanoid sized anti personnel units, but some are as large as tanks. These behemoths saw battlefield action as combat artillery units, supporting Commerce Guild spider walkers with their chain fed ordnance launchers. And if you go back and watch Revenge of the Sith, you can actually see one of these very large Tri droids take out a Republic walker with a single missile. That's incredible power. I picked up the Clone Wars Incredible Guide to Vehicles book for this video, hoping that it would have some information on the Magna Tri droid. It had a little bit, not much. Pretty cool book though. I think I will maybe even go back and check out some prior videos, see if there's some information I can add. What we do know, however, is again that the photoreceptors of the Magna Tri droid offer it 360 degree vision, and that the scaled up version could reach a height of 14 and a half meters or 50 feet, which again is just terrifying and there's no reason they couldn't scale this thing up even further. Overall, I think the Techno Union provided some of the most terrifying creations during the Clone Wars, not just the Octoptara Combat Tri 
droid. But I also mentioned the destroyer droid, the B2 super battle droid, of course, as well. And again, even the crab droid, which like the Octop Tara, I think was a pretty scary design and came in two sizes, anti-personnel and anti-vehicle. If I were going to change or add to the Octop Tara tri droid, I think it would have been interesting to play up its surveillance capabilities. Maybe a common strategy for the CIS would be to have Octop Taras spread evenly across the battle, where together they almost act as battle coordinators working together to get a full picture of the battle, which is maybe then beamed off to tactical droids who then use the Octop Taras to distribute orders through to the rank and file droids. I also think it would be cool to see the Octop Tara have some sort of missile launcher. Imagine it pops its head up, gets a view of the area, identifies and locks onto key targets, puts its head back down, then fires off a salvo of even small anti-personnel missiles. The larger Octop Tara variant actually did have configurable weapons. Some have the laser cannon variety. Others actually had traditional munition launchers. These are what we see during Order 66. But even more configurability would be cool, especially on the larger model. I think there's no reason why you don't have a couple extra blaster cannons around the legs, just for even more anti-personnel protection. Obviously, if you want to design a better version of the droid, the thing you want to fix is the head. The head is not only just an obvious target because of its size, but it also houses both essentially every crucial system of the droid, but also the ammo reserves on the larger model. So you can see why that's not necessarily a great combination. Maybe you invest more in each individual droid, give them shield generators. I don't know. I also think it'd be pretty cool to see a repulsor lift version of this droid, which is essentially just a more militarized probot or probe droid. Anyway, that's all for me. Now, we will do a quick hashtag ask Ek question. I actually lost the name of the person who asked it, so I'm so sorry, but the question was about shields in Star Wars and how Anakin and Obi-Wan were able to take out the Invisible Hands shields in Episode 3. So the first thing you have to know about shields in Star Wars is that they are inconsistent. They operate based on what the plot requires, but generally, shields protect against both laser and particle weapons alongside, you know, ship passing through. What you're looking at in Revenge of the Sith right before they board the Invisible Hand is not the ship's main shields, but a smaller, probably one-way shield covering the hangar. Why this exists, I don't know. I think it's confusing. I think it was probably meant to be the ship shields by George Lucas, but that doesn't really make sense. I guess you'd explain it as the Providence, the Invisible Hand, had already been battered so much that the ship's main shields were down, so they just took out those small generators. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. But that's all I've got for you today. Sorry for the shorter video. As you can hear, I've got a baby, and we're about to head off for a couple of days before Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. I'll probably get another video before Santa comes, but I'll see you then. As always, be safe. Have a good one. May the force be with you.